So next we're going to hear from uh, Stewie Corno. Uh, Stewie is Cameron's mother, who you see over there, uh, cute as a button. Um, so Cameron was diagnosed with uh, anaplastic ependymoma in March of 2020, underwent two tumor surgeries and radiation with proton beam and then chemotherapy, and most recently finished uh, chemotherapy in uh, December of 2021. So all of those experiences have led Stewie to become a passionate, dedicated advocate for funding for pediatric cancer research. So I ask you to help me welcome her. Is the advancer. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. All right, come on. Uh, well, future Dr. Cameron uh, all, thinks we're here for her performance, so she brought her guitar and microphone. So if I get boring, uh, she might break out and sing and dance. Uh, Cameron actually told me during the, the last session that the primary tumor photo on one of the slides was yucky and that she didn't like it. And she liked the other pictures better. So, Dr. Wessel, um, if you're still on, your next hire is right here. Um, and I'll see you in a Hi, everyone. I'm Stewie Corno, and uh, mom to Cameron, this rock star three year old who is a cancer survivor. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about this warrior, and soon you'll realize what it means to be Cam Strong. Did not think that thing was on. Uh, so to set the stage, yeah, let's just stick to the microphone. It was March 2020. Uh, we were one week into the two-week shutdown, and we just learned about this thing called COVID-19. Like most working parents, uh, my husband Andy and I were struggling to manage working from home without childcare. Um, <laughs> exhibit A. But it's okay because schools were going to reopen in a week, right? Thanks, that was a joke. Uh, the initial timeline for Cameron's diagnosis, it was uh, Friday, March 13th. Yes, Friday the 13th. Uh, we were on our way home from daycare. I'll never forget it because it was right after they told us they were closing for no reason for two weeks. Um, and Cameron vomited in her car seat. I had to pull over, cancel my happy hour plans, and this was the first symptom um, of what would eventually become quite a journey. She began vomiting inter intermittently every few days in the next two weeks. After a week of occasional vomiting, I finally took her to the pediatrician. Food allergies, strep, UTI were among some of the original speculations. And uh, the, next, the next night her vomiting got much worse and she couldn't keep fluids down. And we were worried about her dehydration, so we took her to the Children's National Emergency Room. After a night of tests, IVs, and Zofran, Zofran, she seemed to have turned a corner. So we went home with a GI stomach bug diagnosis. And uh, the next day, the vomiting started up again. So I knew in my gut something wasn't right. Um, I called our pediatrician, and she said, I believe you. Let's get admitted to Georgetown, and we'll run some tests. Um, Cameron was directly admitted to General Peds at Georgetown Hospital. After a few failed tests uh, to figure out what was going on, um, Cameron had an endoscopy scheduled, uh, but the attending, Dr. Renner, said, you know what, let's just rule out neuro, even though I don't see any signs, uh, and let's do a CT scan. The CT found moderate hydrocephalus, and Cameron was scheduled for a full brain MRI the next morning. The next day, Friday, March 27th, I'll never forget um, this day for a lot of reasons, a cookie! to the rescue, Dr. Turetsky, who was at Georgetown with us, may I add. Um, but I'll never forget March 27th. It's not only my dad's birthday who just came and surprised me. Um, it was the day we found out uh, that the MRI found a tumor. Um, and when I pressed on how big it was, they said the size of a clementine. When we, uh, and it was at the back of her brain, uh, compressing on the brainstem and the fourth ventricle. And Cameron was rushed to emergency neurosurgery uh, to release the pressure and resect the tumor. The six hour surgery went an unexpected 14 hours uh, due to the vascular nature of the tumor and Cameron remained intubated uh, the next couple days until they attempted again to resect the remaining tumor. So four days later, Cameron had another neurosurgery to remove the rest of the tumor and it was a huge success. In fact, the surgery took half the time they expected and the neurosurgeon, Dr. Calhoun, said that was a different tumor than I saw last surgery. So your prayers must have worked. Uh, they also put in a Broviac Central line for treatment. 
Uh, while she was intubated, I used that time to connect with other cancer families and use my network around the DMV. And someone once told me, one of the cancer moms, you get three quotes for a house project, but only one quote on your daughter's brain. So that's something that really stuck with me and made me decide to go talk to as many people as I could. Um, so we met with both Hopkins and Children's National and all had the same diagnosis and recommended staying with Dr. Calhoun at Georgetown for her final neurosurgery. Dr. Rude, th she had three, three brain surgeries uh, in 12 days. Uh, but this one was to put in a VP shunt and um, get rid of her EVD. Uh, during this time, the pathology results revealed that Cameron was diagnosed with a grade three anaplastic ependymoma. Um, as you guys all know, cancer of the central nervous system. Cameron remained in the PICU for over a month for recovery and therapy, speech, OT, PT. She had to relearn how to eat, drink, talk, sit, and walk. As you can see, she's recover recovered quickly. Um, it was as if she was a newborn in an 18-month-old's body. Uh, and somewhere in there, not on the official in the timeline here, I found out I was pregnant. Uh, unrelated, but I still think it's newsworthy. <laughs> and uh, so take the beginning of the pandemic, um, keep dropping things, a cancer diagnosis and a new pregnancy. So that trifecta made Cameron's hospitalization a bit more complicated. Thank you so much, Dr. Cameron. Uh, COVID-19 restrictions, as you guys all know, introduce the one parent rule of being unable to leave the room, long periods of isolation, the list goes on. Uh, but I'm really thankful for the Georgetown PICU and oncology teams to lean on. And honestly, I still keep in touch with some of the nurses, Dr. Tresky, who many of you know. And speaking of Dr. T, I really appreciated how he shared with me um, when Cameron's case was discussed at the tumor board. Uh, I think it was like the region or the East Coast or something. I don't really remember. But what I do remember is one of my dad's friends actually was in that meeting. Um, they obviously didn't mention Cameron's name, but um, he knew that they were talking about her case. So it's pretty cool when that kind of comes full circle as a mom. All right. Next slide. So a, f a few months later, she was recovered from surgery and the treatment journey began. Uh, we returned home and we decided to pursue her treatment with Children's National uh, where they had more experience with this type of cancer. It was May 2020 uh, and she started her seven weeks of proton beam radiation, um, mostly on her brain and uh, there was part, a part of it where it was her brain and her spine uh, with Dr. Ladra at Sibley Hospital. Uh, the team was wonderful. Um, that's Cameron's mask right there. And I don't have the final picture, but when they gave it to her at the end, it actually looked like a unicorn um, per her request. So it was really cool how they uh, catered to her in that way. And um, in fact, uh, <laughs> she's singing. Um, So here we are, radiation's done, seven weeks down. Um, she handled it like a champ. Some nausea, balance issues, fatigue, lack of appetite, nothing unexpected, um, no delays. She handled it really well. As you can see, this was the last day of radiation and she was sprinting down the hallway. So uh, she actually got to ring the Sibley Proton Center uh, bell as well. Don't have pictures from the bell ringing ceremony, but it was a hit. Um, and there was Georgetown cupcakes to celebrate. There are many MRIs throughout each step of the process and treatment. Uh, the July MRI, uh, July 2020, is one I want to highlight because that was when we first found the small metastatic spot on her spine. Um, and they were unable to biopsy it or um, operate on it, so we just decided to continue to monitor it and figure out what the best treatment was. Um, and so next up, chemo began. Um, and I guess it, I think it's important to say there was a study that the children's team told us about that was still uh, a 10 year study that was still going on at that time that talked about how with this type of cancer, um, it showed that there was a long term chance of survival of over 80%. So that was 10% higher than they originally told us. So as a parent, when someone tells you that your kid has a chance of 10 plus years long-term survival greater than 80% now when you thought it was 70. I mean, obviously that's huge. Where can I sign up? So that's what we did next. Um, four rounds of intensive inpatient chemo, 
Um, and before each round, all the normal stuff, GFR, audiogram, labs, uh, COVID tests, and then the four rounds began. Um, lots of tough side effects, um, nothing really unexpected. We ended up spending probably uh, two weeks inpatient out of the three weeks of each round with minimal delays. So all things considered, um, it, went, it went well. And here we go, Cameron rings the Children's National Chemo Bell. So that's bell number two, right, Cameron? And um, that, for that one, Daddy got to go with us instead of just one parent. So that was exciting. And um, it was a really special moment because we had lots of complications, uh, a lot of fevers, a lot of transfusions, bacterial infections, C. diff, E. coli. We were stuck in the room for most of it. So it was really uh, a lot of uh, lack of appetite, feeding tube, all that stuff. So, and, and some mild hearing loss. So it was that much sweeter to celebrate the end of that. Um, and the treatment journey continues. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Cameron had a shunt replacement surgery in October 2020 to have a new programmable shunt to allow her to be enrolled in or potentially be enrolled in the clinical trial for targeted radiation antibody treatment. And that's the, um, the radio labeled monoclonal antibody therapy. And unfortunately, she didn't pass the stress test. Um, so she was ineligible for compassionate relief to participate. So, <laughs> um, so back to the drawing board, we decided to do metronomic chemo for 12 months. Um, and as y'all know, that's oral low dose chemotherapy. We gave it to her at home. Um, you know, another complication of just having a baby, I was breastfeeding. So my husband had to do all of the medicine, five different meds a day, crushing pills, putting, you know, cutting them up, um, putting, making the chemo smoothie. It was a lot, uh, the first few months, but we got down into, we got into the rhythm and it got, it got easier, but, um, Definitely juggling the medication schedule in newborn and uh, the pandemic was, was a struggle in the beginning. Uh, but chemotherapy, the good news is proved her metastatic spot on her spine that we were all worried about was actually not a tumor. And Cameron ended up uh, completing her oral chemotherapy in December 2021. So on, doc on December 2nd, Cameron rang for the third and final time. Uh, the Children's National Bell, which was a huge, huge benchmark to end 20 months of treatment. Yeah. And to top it off, yeah. And to top it off, we had the grandparents there with us to celebrate. And today we have Nona and Popsy um, and Mimi and Babo are online. So that was a huge celebration for Cameron. All right. Courageous Cameron. So in November... Uh, 2021, Cameron was awarded the Jack Preston Courage Award. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is um, this was kind of like the gateway for my husband, Andy, and I to be introduced to cancer foundations and the world of advocacy and how severely underfunded pediatric brain cancer research was. And it's made me uh, recently a passion advocate for foundations like CCF and the Lila Bean Foundation. Um, but I'm sure it's no surprise Surprise to y'all and seeing this rock star up here that she's courageous and brave and multiple do multiple doctors commented on her zest for life and feisty personality, which I think uh, one of them may have been Dr. Tressy, but I think are important to beat cancer. Um, and I'm just really grateful for this for this award because it introduced me to people like Dr. Rude and um, these amazing foundations that I could potentially help with. So, Cameron, come up here. So as you can see, how is she doing today? Um, minim minimal physical uh, limitations. She just recently started jumping. That's a big milestone for us, as you have seen on stage. Uh, I mean, her balance and ability to go up and down stairs are something we're still working on. She still gets brain and spine uh, MRIs every three months and occasional lumbar puncture. Uh, but she's currently not in any therapies. And she's doing great. Um, obviously, the local collaboration is a big thing for CCF and the people here, I'm sure. Um, so this is something that happened multiple times from the tumor board that I mentioned before. Um, 
And even after I transferred her care from Georgetown to Children's, we sent scans to Dr. Calhoun. I've reached out to Dr. Turetsky. And I really feel fortunate to live in the D.C. area um, around so many incredible doctors. It's really encouraging that they all work together and just want to help kids like Cameron. I mean, that's, that's why we're all here. And it's, and it's pretty amazing to see. So today, um, as you can see from um, my assistant, she's an absolute rock star. From the mini guitar to the microphone, she's in school, has a million friends, loves books, talking to herself in bed, soccer, playing doctor, plug again to hire her in 2040, uh, tennis, dance parties, helping her dad with projects around the house, swimming and baking with her Mimi, painting and gardening with Nona, who's right there, Golfing and watching planes with Popsy, who's right there. Singing and playing the piano with Babo, so you can thank Babo for her act tonight. Um, and did I mention she's incredible at hide and seek? Always wins. She's absolutely the best big sister to Caitlin, particularly when she shares her toys. So I'd say she's living a pretty typical three and a half year old life. Actually, no, she's not typical, and we all know it. What are you, Cameron? She's Cam Strong. <laughs> thank you. Good job. Oh. Any questions? 